Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it on any of our awesome science videos. Also, scan the QR code in the top left corner of the screen to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. In today's video, we will explain the importance of nitrogen and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of ecosystems. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning target for today is, I can explain the importance of nitrogen and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of an ecosystem. Nitrogen makes up 78% of Earth's atmosphere. It's also an important part of living things. Nitrogen is found in proteins, nucleic acids such as DNA and RNA, and chlorophyll. The nitrogen cycle moves nitrogen through the abiotic and biotic parts of ecosystems. Even though nitrogen gas makes up most of Earth's atmosphere, plants cannot use the nitrogen gas to make organic compounds for themselves and other organisms. The two nitrogen atoms in a molecule of nitrogen gas are held together by a very stable triple bond. This bond must be broken for the nitrogen to be used. Since nitrogen is a limited resource on the planet, a nitrogen atom doesn't spend much time doing nothing when it's in a form living things can use. Scientists call this form fixed nitrogen. Fixed nitrogen is taken up by plants, which are eaten by animals, and then these animals are eaten by other animals, which die and decompose and release nitrogen back into the ecosystem to be worked on by bacteria or plants. The nitrogen cycle can be broken down into four steps. One, nitrogen fixation. Two, nitrification. Three, ammonification. And four, denitrification. Let's analyze and break down the following diagram to explain the four steps of the cycle and how nitrogen gas is broken down and cycled through the abiotic and biotic parts of ecosystems. We'll start with step one, nitrogen fixation. Step one, nitrogen fixation. Believe it or not, lighting and bacteria are mainly responsible for turning atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen lipid things can use. Atmospheric nitrogen, or N2, is very stable since it has a triple bond molecule so it takes an incredible amount of energy to convert it to a different form. If you've ever wondered why your outdoor plants seem more lively at their rain than they do when you turn a sprinkler on for them, there's a reason for that. Lightning electrifies atmospheric nitrogen, or N2, and water, H2O, to reconfigure them into ammonium, or NH3, and nitrates, NO3. The ammonium and nitrates fall to the ground as rain, where plants take it up through their roots and use it for their biological processes. On the other hand of the spectrum, the most common way nitrogen is made available to organisms is when atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by bacteria, some of which live free in the soil and others of which enjoy a symbiotic relationship with certain plant species. Legumes like peas, clover, and peanuts have little nodules on the roots that attract bacteria that convert stubborn atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia or ammonium, which can then be used to power the plant. Now let's move on to step 2 with nitrification. Step 2. Nitrification Ammonia in the soil can be used directly by plants, but it is also the first step in the process of nitrification, through which specialized bacteria and archaea convert ammonia into nitrite, NO2, and then pass it off to an entirely different set of prokaryotes that further oxidize the nitrite into nitrate, NO3. This process is slow, but it's the way that nitrogen is built as a nutrient in soil and aquatic and marine environments. Terrestrial plants, for instance, can absorb ammonium and nitrate through their root hairs. Now let's move on to step three with ammonification. Step three, ammonification. Everything living eventually dies and the nitrogen a particular organism was using when it died is taken in by bacteria that turn a nitrogen rich dead organism into ammonium. This ammonium cannot be taken in by the roots of a plant and used again. Look at the rabbit in the diagram as an example. The rabbit eats the plants and takes in nitrogen. Eventually the rabbit dies and it decomposes and the soil breaks its body down. When this happens, the decomposers turn the nitrogen from the rabbit's body into ammonium that the plants can now take back in their roots. Now let's move on to step 4 for denitrification. Step 4 Denitrification It's possible to convert bioavailable nitrogen into atmospheric nitrogen again, and that process is called denitrification. Nitrification is performed by bacteria and archaea that can tolerate oxygen. Not all prokaryotes can. In the case of denitrification, 
Certain anaerobic bacteria that don't need oxygen convert nitrate to nitrogen gas, which floats up into the atmosphere and plays hard to get until some lightning or nitrogen fixing bacteria come along and turn the NO2 nitrogen gas back into NO3 nitrates ready to be used in living organisms in the nitrogen cycle once again. In summary, nitrogen cycles through the abiotic or non-living parts of ecosystems via the atmosphere and soil to the living or abiotic parts of ecosystems through bacteria, plants, and animals. Nitrogen is important in the growth and overall well-being of plants and animals. Nitrogen is a key element in the nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA, which are the most important of all biological molecules and crucial for all living things. DNA carries the genetic information or instructions for making up living organisms, and RNA takes this genetic information from DNA to make proteins that create organisms like you, me, and every other living thing on Earth. Quick question, what would happen if the nitrogen cycle stopped? Pause the video and take two minutes to respond. Ladies and gentlemen, you got this. That's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining the importance of nitrogen and how it is cycled throughout the living and non-living parts of ecosystems by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet and if you don't get it the first time, you, you better, better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until, until you win. win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon and also scan the QR code to contact us and explore more of our awesome content and material. Peace and have a positive productive day. You thought you could win. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I'm sorry, Cassie.